Okay, Evan, you ready to go to the doctor? You ready to go? You got all your stuff? You want to unbuckle your... You want to unbuckle? Come on! For lunch, we are using up the rest of our leftovers. So this is just pork chops and rice and Brussels sprouts for the two boys. And we have some homemade pizza left over. We're gonna eat some applesauce. Looking at our August menu, even though it has certain days because of the craziness of the last few days we've just been kind of filling in so like i just highlighted applesauce here that we were supposed to eat that on tuesday we did have corn dogs yesterday today we are on track for leftovers last night i was supposed to make this meatloaf i set out the meat in the fridge so i'm going to make switch this over here for tonight um for brian and i we bought this turkey last night at Aldi. I'm just making us a, he's going to eat gluten-free with me, a gluten-free wrap because all the leftovers were used up. Hey friends, welcome back to Oso Farm. So I have been making a video for you yesterday and my audio was not working throughout the whole thing. So it has been a really crazy whirlwind of a week. We had a wedding of my nephew Caleb to a sweet girl named Alyssa this past weekend and that was kind of all-consuming for us in terms of we really couldn't focus on anything school related or house related but it was totally worth it. We had so much fun. And then also my Emma had some preterm labor and so the beginning of the week I was in the hospital with her. So we're on week two of homeschool and today's Thursday, so we're trying to get caught up. Yesterday I had to take Evan to the doctor. He has an ear infection for the second time. And so we're following up with ENT on Monday. So this week has been crazy. And I've shown you um, our mi August menu. And so I'm trying to get caught up on that. We're, let's see, I don't know what time it is. I've got timers going, but i taking a pause and grading some of our homeschool stuff to make dinner. So I'm making six sisters stuff. I think it's called like mini meatloaves with, um, and a sheet pan with green beans. I'll link it below. I'm doubling it so that I can freeze a portion of it. If you are new here, we have 10 kids and have five left at home. And so four of those are teenagers. So this past summer, two of my adult boys ended up moving out of the house and are living independently, going to school and working full time. So we're kind of adjusting. My four teenagers still eat a lot, but it's not as much as it was just at the beginning of the summer. So we're gonna do half tonight and half in the freezer. So I'm doubling it. I have three pounds of hamburger meat in here and two cups of oats four eggs, four tablespoons of brown sugar. It said two onions, but I just did an Azure standard order that will be um, filmed at some point coming up. Like I mentioned, we've had some chaotic moments um, that I bought a ton of minced onion. So instead of chopping two onions, I'm just gonna use up this because I have all of that that I just purchased. This is four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. This is a great thing. You can get this at Walmart. If you're doing large amounts, it goes up to 10 tablespoons 
150 milliliters, five ounces, and 30 teaspoons. I'll try to link this below, but we got this at Walmart. And then it called for a cup of Italian breadcrumbs. I'm using this Good & Gather gluten-free from Target. It's not Italian, so I sprinkled some Italian seasoning on top. And then it called for tomato soup, condensed, which I don't have, so we're just substituting with tomato sauce and ketchup. And then it said salt and pepper to taste. So we're just, I don't, obviously I'm not gonna taste raw meat, so I don't really know what that means. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of this. And then I don't touch raw hamburger meat with my bare hands. I just, I can't do it, it makes me gag, so. I have these food gloves, food safe gloves. And then we're just gonna make these into small little meat loaves after oh, we get this all mixed up. So I'm gonna serve this with mashed potatoes. And I had made mashed potatoes and put them in a freezer bag which I've never frozen potatoes before. These were already cooked and they thawed out. They're in that skillet over there. there. So I'm just gonna turn that on low and add probably a little bit more butter and milk. But if they end up tasting good, I'm definitely gonna keep those in, make a big batch of potatoes because when we need potatoes as a side or like my shepherd's pie and stuff that would make that a lot easier okay this is really gross y'all i don't know if y'all get grossed out by this Ooh, and it is so cold that it's like burning my hands okay i'm gonna can you just get me a scooper like a i guess i could use this did I do that? That doesn't look too big. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, just poured some barbecue or squirted barbecue sauce on top. It actually called for some of the soup to be on top, but I thought it would taste good to have barbecue. And then we buy these huge gallon barbecue and whoop, gallon ranch at Sam's. And then we keep these in our extra fridge and then we refill with a funnel these little ones to keep in our fridge in the kitchen. And something else I've been doing that's been helping so food doesn't go to waste is we don't really have room in this fridge. Um, it's always kind of packed like this for leftovers. So I end up putting them in the garage fridge and then we end up forgetting about them. So anything like this was actually completely full today. It had pasta and pizza and pork chops and we wipe it off as we go so I know that these are the things we have left to use up. People are adding things that we act, that they would like to get and then these are things that we're definitely running out of.
Okay, so I'm making our tribe of minis, um, Sarah's granola. I've never made it before. So she uses 24 cups of ro rolled oats and I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna half this recipe to make sure this is what we like before we make so much. It also calls for a cup of whole wheat flour that I'm gonna substitute with gluten-free flour so that I can have it also. So I have 12 cups of oats in here. So this is, I went ahead and it's a tablespoon of cinnamon and then I went ahead and did the full amount of nutmeg. It was just a teaspoon. I figured between 12 cups of oats, that would be okay. And then I did half a cup of gluten-free flour. And now I'm going to melt one cup of coconut oil and add a cup of honey on top. Okay, so I got I got this to where it was right at, well it's a little bit above, the one cup. So half a cup of the coconut oil and half a cup of honey. And then it says to microwave this for three minutes. I don't necessarily think because it's so hot here that it's going to take that long. So we will do a minute. Then we're going to just pour over this and put in a cookie sheet. Yes, this is totally liquid. So we're going to pour over this. Whoa. That really made it not stick to the sides of that. I'm going to stir it up. Okay, it looks all mixed up, so I'm going to pour it into the pan. Okay, so this made two big trays. I'm going to wait until the meatloaf comes out to put these in. It says bake for 16 minutes. So I'll probably stir them halfway through to just make sure they all get crusty on top. Look. Can you say hi? Look. You taking me somewhere? Look. No. Where are we going? Where are you taking me? Oh, you want to hold hands? Where are we going? Look. No. No? Okay, well, I'm going to go play with Evan. There is not much in the garden to show. My tomatillos are huge. Like, this plant is thriving. It is a huge plant. has so many flowers, but we cannot get it to fruit. I mean, look how many. I was reading that a lot of times these are really stubborn. We've been doing this with a paintbrush, like going to all the different plants. And I have heard that sometimes, there's Pedro, our rooster, in September, they just literally each plant would have like 200 tomatillos. So I'm holding out hope. Our corn was here. We've lost that. And um, these little peppers are just not thriving. It's been a hundred plus degrees with no rain for months. My zinnias do look really pretty though. Look at this. And I had, my marigolds look nice. I had some squash here and we had squash bugs kind of take over. The dogs are being so hyper. I think when it finally gets some shade, they go crazy. These are green bell peppers. We've never gotten one. But see, they're, they, it looks promising and then nothing happens. So over here, we just have some zinnias. Those look really pretty. We have a pepper plant, another pepper plant that's kind of squished by this massive tomatillo. I mean, it is just huge. Huge, huge, huge. We took some tomato worms, I don't know what they're called, off of here today. And they really had just eaten this 
down to nothing. So hopefully this is my one last squash plant. It doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look amazing either. There's no, it's not flowering at all. It's kind of drying out. And then again, some more zinnias. Over here, I've got some dead marigolds and some chard, a dead Roma tomato plant, a dead cherry tomato plant, and then these pepper plants are just so dry. This one has a tiny little pepper that never really developed. My dead sunflower, this whole <sighs> this whole bed is pretty much nothing. There's a few pepper plants, but they never made. I think it is just, just too much of a drought. I mean, we watered every morning and now they're starting to kind of put some limits on that. And so I think until it gets cooler, there's not much we can do or hope for. She's about to get a bath. She's been in the mud. So I've been in the mud. What do you think, Luna? Even our turkeys are muddy. Hey guys. There's Pedro, there's our rooster. These hens over here are trying to bury themselves in the dirt to get cool. It's probably still close to 100 degrees and it is 7.30. So, so crazy. Thank you. 